Mr. Obed, um, I am honored to meet you. I hope you're doing awesome. These are my lovely kids, 26 creatures. We are missing one today, but um, they promise that they will behave and listen to the story. Uh, so, I mean, you explain to them everything, okay? Okay, guys, so if I can have your attention, I'm gonna start, right? It's a short story. My name is Obed Figueroa. So I want to, you know, say hi to everybody there at Forest Glen Elementary. Hi, you guys. And what I'm gonna do is I'm, I, I wrote a book that's about a little boy um, who's interested in the sciences. So I'm really happy to share it with you guys. Um, you know, so I'm gonna share my screen so you can see, so, we could, so you can see the book, okay? Can you guys see that? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so this is the guy. This is the guy, his name is Marcus. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. All righty, so I wrote this book and I'm from New York, guys. Um, so again, nice to meet you. Uh, so I will flip through. Um, I'm gonna really just, I'm gonna read it to you and show you the illustrations as I read, okay? So that's the name, Marcus Learns About Different Types of Doctors. All right, so that's the title, and then that's my name. So Obed Figueroa is my name. They let you do that kind of cool stuff when you write a book. Okay, so this is where we're gonna start. So Marcus, looking towards his grandmother. Nana, I wanna be a doctor when I grow up. Marcus, you would be the first in our family. What made you think about that idea? I was just seeing the doctors on TV and I like how they help make people feel better. You know, Marcus, there are different types of doctors. I know a place we can visit to learn more. Really? Tomorrow, we'll take a trip into town. So this is Nana. Marcus, this is our community health center. This is where people go when they want to see a doctor for help. Can we go inside? Nana, yes, we can. I called the manager and we can go inside and have a look around and meet some of the doctors. Marcus, really excited, yahoo! Will the doctors talk to us? Nana, yes. Doctors want people to take better care of themselves. They spend years in school learning how to help people in different kind of ways. So they go inside. Nana, Marcus, this is Tracy. She is the center's office manager. She helps the doctors by keeping their appointments organized because they get really busy. Tracy looking at Marcus. Hi, Marcus. I hear that you want to become a doctor. If it's okay with you, I'd like to introduce you to some of my friends here at the center. Here's the first one he meets. Marcus, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Peña. She's a dentist. Hi, Marcus, it's nice to meet you. I went to school for many years and I learned how to help people that have problems with their teeth. Marcus, Dr. Pena, I visit my dentist for checkups, like I'm sure some of you guys do, right? All of you. Dr. Pena, Marcus, that's, a, that's good to hear. I also do checkups for my patients. Marcus, Nana, isn't that Dr. Nicholas over there? Where? Oh, I see her. Yes, that's Dr. Nicholas. She works here and she helped me when I had problems with my feet. Let's go say hi. This is Dr. Nicholas. Hi, Marcus. Good to see you both. What brings you here to the health center? Marcus wanted to meet some of your doctor friends. Marcus, I hear you're learning about the different kinds of doctors. Yes, Dr. Nicholas, I did not know that there were different kinds of doctors. 
Marcus. I am a doctor of podiatry. You see the DPM at the end of my name tag? I went to medical school and learned how to help people with foot pain. I can also do foot surgery if the patient needs that kind of help. Dr. Nicholas, can you also help people with their teeth? No, Marcus. I am only allowed to help people with the things I learned in medical school. Dr. Benya went to school and she learned how to help people with problems they have with their teeth. Thanks, Dr. Nicholas, for talking to us. Marcus, Tracy wants us to meet another doctor. Dr. Blake, I would like you to meet Marcus and his grandmother, Mrs. Tyler. Good morning to you both. I hear you are learning a lot about doctors today. Yes, I am, Dr. Blake. What kind of doctor are you? Marcus, I'm often called an internist or a primary care doctor. I have MD at, after my name. This means medical doctor. I went to medical school to learn how to help people figure out what's going on in their body. Sometimes I do checkups and sometimes I help people feel better when they are in pain. Marcus, Dr. Blake, I visited a doctor for, for checkups too. My school says I have to get yearly physicals before I start school. Do you guys have to do that too? Every year get physicals? Yeah. Dr. Blake, he laughs. Yes, Marcus. It was a rule from my school too. It's important that we take good care of our bodies. Ms. Tyler, do you have time to meet some more of my friends at the center? Tracy, thank you. Marcus and I have to leave soon, but we can meet a couple more of your doctors. Great. Marcus, I would like you to meet Dr. Metasor. She is a doctor of osteopathic medicine. Dr. Metasor, how does an osteopathic doctor help people? Marcus, I hear you met some of my friends here. So Marcus, as Tracy mentioned, I'm a doctor of osteopathic medicine. Do you see the D-O after my name? Yes, I was going to ask you what those letters meant. Marcus, I went to medical school and I learned how to help people figure out what's bothering their bodies by understanding the bones throughout their body. I learned about how things are connected in our body. Marcus, say you're feeling pain in your legs. Well, it might be because your bones in your back may not be straight. I can help fix that problem, which would make the pain go away. Whoa, Dr. Metasaur, I didn't know you could do that. Thanks, Dr. Metasaur. Marcus, remember, I told you that I, I was not a doctor either. This is Tracy, the manager. Yes, I remember. Good, because I wanted you also to meet someone who also helps doctors and patients. Marcus, meet Mr. Figueroa. He is a nurse. Marcus, Mr. Figueroa, I didn't know boys can be nurses. Marcus, Mr. Figueroa laughing. You can call me Raymond. And yes, boys are nurses too. I went to school and learned a lot about our body and how to work with the doctors to help people. I meet patients and ask them important questions. I also give checkups. And if the doctor orders, I can also give the patient medication to make them feel better. Marcus's reaction. Raymond, do you work with a lot of doctors and people? Do you ever get sad? when someone comes to the center in pain. Sometimes, but I have to remember that I went to school to help people in pain. So I have to stay focused and work with my team to help the patients. So 
So now they're with, at, back with the manager. Um, Tracy and Mr. Figueroa, thank you so much. Marcus and I appreciated everyone being so kind to answer our questions. We learned so much from our visit. Tracy's reaction. No problem, Mrs. Tyler. I am glad we could help. Marcus, I look forward to calling you Dr. Marcus one day. Do well in school so you can learn all you need to help our community. Miss Tracy, I will, and please tell the doctors I said it was nice to meet them. So guys, that's the story of Marcus and his adventure in his own community. So thank you for listening to that. So what I wanna do now um, is I wanna play a little game with you guys because I just shared some information to you and I wanna see if you remember any of that, okay? And so if you don't, that's okay because I'll, you, you know, I'll give you the answer, all right? So let's go. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. So again, good afternoon, guys, at Forest Glen Elementary. And thank you so much, Mr. Pibero Soto. Yeah. Thanks so much. So I'm going to be asking two questions as we go through these slides. Which doctor uses these tools? And then can you guess the name of any of the tools you see? Okay? So you guys, can shout, you can shout it out if you know the answer. Right. Oh, no. Okay, so which type of doctor uses these tools? You guys know, you can shout it out. Dentist! Good. Easy! <laughs> can, anyone, can anyone guess the name of these things? Any of those, you know the name of these things, these tools? Go ahead. <laughs> so yes, you guessed right. So it's a dentist. And those and you see those are the names of the tools. So those are different types of tools that a, that a dentist uses. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go to the next one. Which type of doctor uses this tool? <laughs> sometimes that this usually happens to older people and sometimes your nail your nail when you're much much older can this can sometimes happen you, and it's painful you got to go see a doctor it's called in, ingrown to, a toenail so what about this one which type of doctor uses this So I wanted to make sure you guys knew this. So this is that doctor, you probably didn't haven't heard this word before, osteopathic. And this kind of doctor is the same as the MD doctor. These are only the only two types at the highest level. They could do surgery, they could do, you know, they could be your primary care doc. You go see them every year. But this one in particular, his specialty is not only is he a, a doctor, he also knows how to feel the back of your bones on your back all the way down to your foot. He could feel if there are problems anywhere just by feeling it. He knows how to do like certain techniques. So he's got a little extra skill, okay? And so that's a new one for you guys, osteopathic doctor, D-O. What about this one? So all, all medical doctors, right? They use this because if they want to look inside your ear so that they can see. Can you pronounce? And so the name of the tool, that tool is otoscope. 
It's called an autoscope. Okay, so you, when you go to medical school, they would teach you how to use that so that you can see things, right? Okay, so let's see. Let's keep going. What about this? Nerd! No! Guys, you probably see that first one a lot now in school, right? <laughs> okay. So, all right, so nurses. Nurses mostly use it, but all doctors. Doc doctors can use it too, but most often, you know, checking the temperatures it are the nurses, most often. Okay. Go ahead. You got a question? Knew that it was a nose because my dad was a nose and she has no stuff. Yep, yep, I knew it. Okay. Raise your hand if your family members are nurses. No, Adrian, Louis, who else? Lola. So you might know, right? Yeah, some of this stuff, right? Okay, <laughs> so you know how our medical people yeah. and you know. What does MA stand for? Oh, you can ask him. Senor Robert, um, Henry is asking, what does MA stands for in your name? So, so generally, when people are professionals, um, you'll see like a little comma after their name, and then the letters tell you like what kind of what kind of profession are they in? What do they study? Right. So, like. If, if I was a doctor, it might say MD, it might say DO. But for me, I'm not a doctor. I have a master's in higher education. So I specialize in helping students prepare for college or helping the school become a better college. That's my specialty. So Mr. Robert, um, I told my kids that you were uh, very talented, that you were very talented uh, writing books and doing all this amazing stuff and stories. Thank you, thank you. By the way, we were reading some good stories this week. Hey guys, uh, my little friend for allí, Jacob. Can you sit down, please, so we can hear him, we can listen to him. Okay, so we were um, reading some stories this week. Who remembers the name of the story of English? Oh, uh, the spelling bee. Okay. Spelling bee. So, uh, in the story, we were talking about how important is the author purpose on the story. So, some of my kids were asking, why do you decide to become an author? And how does that change your life? Or what can you tell them about the beautiful profession of being an author. Listen. So, so guys, so important for you to hear, right? Because I want you to know what I do, you totally can do this. As you get older, as you keep studying and writing, and I know sometimes you get those marks on your papers, and it's like, correct this, correct that, and you get mad sometimes, like, you know, you see those red marks. I want you to know, embrace it. Like say, okay, thank you so much for teaching me this. Next time I'm gonna do better. Cause that was me. That was me, I was you. I was that person that had to work on my writing. And then what I found out was the power of writing. There's such a power in it because you're able to share stories and we all have our stories that we would like to share. Sometimes we just tell our friends. We tell our friends the stories, right? But check this out, how cool is it for me to write something in New York and somebody in Indianapolis reads it, somebody in Africa reads it, somebody in Puerto Rico reads it. I mean, Ooh. oh my God, that's like amazing. I'm like this one person and I'm yeah. in New York and people around the world, little kids around the world are reading. That's so, powerful. So, um. Can you tell the kids uh, how many books have you written or um, how can we start writing if one of them want to become a writer and an author, what they should do? You have to, you have to keep working on your writing and reading. Reading and writing and all the other subjects are important, but you definitely have to keep working on your writing. So when your teachers give you comments, how to do better, just keep, keep making those changes because it, 
little by little, you're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And you just, you can start writing your stories now. You don't have to wait till you're like an old person like me. You can write stories now. There are authors that are young. Go ahead, yes. You got a question? Um, how long did it take you to write a book? So the first one that I did took, it, so it's not just a matter of me writing words, right? Like that's, that's one part. The next part is that it goes to a publisher and then the publisher who's gonna make the book, they have all these teams of people. So they gotta do the, they gotta do the graphics, they gotta make the pictures, they gotta make sure I don't have any spelling errors, they gotta make sure all the words are in the right place. So that took, to answer your question, a little less than a year, a little less than a year. Some places are faster. Uh, one day, one day, uh, we're, we're going to start making books, and then have, they're going to have a bookstore and start selling them. Okay, you want to have a uh, bookstore? Yeah, and we are going to. Oh, that's good. That's good. So there you have a, <laughs> one of your photos. She want to have a bookstore and sell, and sell books. That's the next one that's coming out. And as I wanted to, to show a little boy who's, he has friends. It's not just about his interests. He has friends that have different interests and that's okay. It's okay to have your, your own interests. You don't have to be like everybody else. So he has friends that do art. He has friends that like math. He has friends that like technology. He, likes, he has friends that like the sciences. And in this one, the next one coming out, probably end of year, if not next, you're gonna learn about their stories. And why, you know, and they're from different backgrounds, you know, um, and, and so it all comes together and you hear about them playing in the park, you know, preparing for a concert, all these kind of fun things. Somebody else? Me, me. Have you ever wrote a chapter book? This, this one is chapter. The first, the first one was really for elementary school kids, like maybe first, second grade, but this one, now that same character, now he's in middle school, eighth grade. So he's, he's, he's getting ready for high school. So wow. this one is chapter. This one is a lot more reading, um, about 25 chapters and a little less, less uh, pictures. Not so much pictures. You wanna? Oh, that's good. Okay, um, my little friend, hey, 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 Mikey. Where are you writing from making a book? Oh, that's where do you write and make your books down? Where do you write and make your books down? So you can write anywhere. You can write, so I, sometimes I, I write, this is before it goes to, to the publisher. I write sometimes in the park. I write sometimes on the train when it's quiet. I write sometimes, you know, in my backyard. Um, I'll just take out my pencil, get a, get a writing pad and just start writing. And sometimes the way I do it, the first book, I did it like a play. So you could put all the people's names down. And so if Marcus is talking, you could say what Marcus says. And then you could do the next person's name and then write what the next person says as a way of keeping it kind of organized. So that's one technique that I use. Adrian, your question. How old are you starting with two books? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. He's asking, how old do you start making uh, books and stories? You can make it as, you could be as young as, if you know how to write, you know, so you don't have to write for someone, let's say a college person reading, right? You could write for someone that's um, a second grade reader, right? So there's different types of writing. Um, so if you are good with writing and you got a story at your age now, you can, you know, work with an adult and kind of map it out, just like map out your story, and they can help you organize your thinking. Uh, well, Jacob, read. I noticed, I noticed in the other book there was a doctor named Mr. Figueroa. 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 You want to know if we use the name because of him? And also, maybe <laughs> use the name because of you. <laughs> So yes. yeah, so Mr. So Mr. Figueroa um, is my my oldest son is a nurse. So he's a grown man. My my oldest is a grown man, like a 20, 27 years old, gonna be 28, and he's a nurse. So I wanted to I wanted to show you guys that yes, you know, boys can be nurses, and he's a nurse, 
and he married a woman who's a nurse. So they're both nurses. Okie dokie. Uh, Matt, what was the question? What? Uh, we have a question. Yeah. Try to remember. Olivia. I think he asked, he, he answered that. How long have you been making um, stories? Um, probably three, two, three years, two, three years. Yeah, not a long time. How old were you? Well, so right now I'm really old. Christ. Oh. <laughs> so I'm 50, 53 years old now. 53. So I would say I probably started doing this Yes, yeah, 50. Yeah, 50. Okay. Uh, Laila. Mira, Laila. On top of the desk, the green one is clean. The green one is clean. Okay. Last couple of questions. Let me see if you did a question, Lola. There you go. There you go. How do you draw the pictures? Okay. So, authors, some. Most often authors are just the ones writing the words. Sometimes they get special talents and you'll find an author that can do both. I'm not that person. <laughs> so I found this uh, guy. Uh, he is a, a, a wonderful, they call them illustrator, right? Yeah. That's right? That can draw pictures. So he's my illustrator and he's from Haiti. He's actually from Haiti. So you're saying he draws the pictures? He draws the, I tell him the story. And then I'll say to our, I'll send her a message and I say, okay, um, in this scene, I want Marcus to be looking at his friends playing in a band and he'll draw it out. And then send me a proof. He's, he'll sketch it out and I look at it and I go, hmm, okay, make this one a little shorter, this one a little bigger, this one a little this. And he tweaks and tweaks and tweaks until we get it right. Gotcha. Okay. Mom, my little friend Jonathan, have a question. Click. That's it. Stem. Oh, that. Why does the the letters spell stem? Science. No. No, I just think you say stem. So in education, education stem is something you should be guys should be familiar with. Um, so those you know stem is common. What's different now in education is they throw in into A because they want to make sure that they include art. Right. So you have S for science. So I gave you a little picture for that. T for um, technology, because that's important too. E for engineering, A for art, and M for math. All those things come together and should be part of your education so that you kind of, you know, you know a little bit of everything. That's nice, and you should uh, learn about it. Holly, what is your question? Was it hard leaving your home to go to that? <laughs> if you have to leave your home in order to do that. To, to do what? To write the book? Write the book? Yeah, have it? Yeah. No, no. You know, I, I go I go back, I work in uh, I work in a school in, in this city. We're a middle school and a high school. Um, so I, I direct the enrollment there. Um, so sometimes uh, you know, as I go to work, I'm on the train, I'll write on the train. Um, or I write at home, either way. So as he said, you can you can select what, whatever place you want to, to write something. It can be the house, it can be the park, the beach, it can be the library, it can be the water. Yep. whatever you feel more at peace. The water cannot be in the water. Is it anywhere? Well, maybe in the, in the, como en la orilla de la playa? You mean the sand? Yeah, in the sand. Oh, yeah. the sand, but not in the water. The water. The water. The water. The water. Well, if you have a big ball, you, you might yeah, you know what's important with story writing, guys? Um, so you can have a journal, right? You can have a journal and you just, it's called free writing. It's just get your thoughts out. When you first write the first first time, just get your, get your ideas out. You know, don't worry about comma for the first time because you want to get, you know, just let it flow out of you with no blocks. And then you come back and look at it again and go, hmm, okay, that's not a sentence. But you want to get your thoughts out. That's the best thing a writer can do is just get it out of their head. Uh, and then you come back and, and work with it to make it, you know, sound better. Awesome. Okay, last question, Cora. Are all of your books about Marcus? 
this, these, these first two, these are my first two books. Yes, it's about Marcus and he's first, he's in elementary school. Then he goes to middle school. Then he goes to high school. Then he's gonna go to college. So I'm kind of like showing his walk. What is this walk that he has? And it's not always about him. It's about the people around him. What's, what's influencing him and how does he stay focused? How does he do that? So, Mr. Figueroa, we are beyond grateful for your time. Yes. The kids were waiting this uh, since uh, yesterday? Or no. before yesterday? No, 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 Monday. On Monday, I told you? No, 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 no. Couple no, days ago. No, no, so, no, they were no, waiting no, for no, today. No, uh, <laughs> Hey, no, listen, because we have five minutes. Um, so they are grateful. Uh, Carter, I see your nose. Say your nose. Um, they want to say thank you. So guys, at the count of three, everybody's going to say thank you. Because thank he you. Hey, hey, at the count of three. Because he did say, okay? One, two, two three. Thank you! Spanish immersion program, so how do you say thank you in Spanish? Okay. Stay there, stay there. Awesome. Okay, stay there, stay there. Okay. Don't move. I'm gonna take a picture in the screen because everyone is in the screen, and I'm gonna send it to him. Say cheese. A lot of blessings. I'm going to make sure I, I write to you after this. I'm going to send them to the school bus. <laughs> and then we're going to shout a little bit. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.